Hello, 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 everyone. Hi, how is everyone doing today? I am your host, Sharice Johnson Moore, your hope builder, lifting you up out of your sorrow by guiding you to see the Christ within through scripture and practical applications. And it is time, it is time, it is time. It is time for our daily devotional. Today, we are talking about 1 Kings chapter 22, 1 through 53. And it speaks about Micaiah warns Ahab. Ahab dies in battle and Jehoshaphat reigns in Judah. Micaiah warns Ahab. Ahab dies in battle. Jehoshaphat reigns in Judah. All right, come on, get your Bibles, your tablets, cell phones, however you may be reading the word, and come on and let's learn something new today that the Lord wants to teach us, okay? All right, come on now, we have to do this, and let's get busy with daily devotional. Authors, 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 have you written a book? Are you an experienced author or a new author? Well, I've got news for you. Authors Excerpt Sunday is the perfect start to growing your audience awareness with the public. Authors Excerpt Sunday has interview spots available in many forms. Live broadcasting done on all social media outlets, television, and podcasting. We would love to help you tell the world about your book. You can reach us at I am Sharice at ShariceNJohnsonMoore.com or 724-570-1153 for further details. And let's tell the world about your book. First Kings chapter 22, 1 through 53. First Kings chapter 22, 1 through 53. And it reads, And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year, that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth in Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to battle in Ramoth, Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, my horses are thy horses. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about four hundred men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Elah, Elah, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten hither, Micaiah, the son of Elah, Emla, the king of Israel, and 
Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, sat each on his throne, having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zedekiah, the Zedekiah, Zedekiah, the son of Chenana, made him horns of iron, and he said, Thus saith the Lord, With these shalt thou push the Syrians until thou have consumed them. And all the prophets prophesied, so saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand. And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold now, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of the one of be the word of the one of them, and speak that which is good. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord said saideth unto me that will I speak. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered him, Go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee? that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit, and stood before the Lord, and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him, and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. But Zedekiah, the son of Charnane, went near and smote Micaiah on the cheek and said, Which way went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? And Micaiah said, Behold, Thou shalt see in that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. And the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and carry him back unto Ammon, the governor of the city, and to jo- Joash, jo- Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus said the king, Put this fellow in the prison and feed him with bread of affliction and with water of affliction until I come in peace. And Micaiah said, If thou return at all in peace, the Lord have not spoken by me. And he said, Hearken, O people, every one of you. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and enter into the battle, but put thou on thy robes 
And the king of Israel disguised himself and went into the battle. But the king of Syria commanded his thirty and two captains that had ruled over his chariot, saying, Fight neither with small nor great, save only with the king of Israel. And it came to pass, and the captains of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat, that they said, Surely it is the king of Israel. And they turned aside to fight against him, and Jehoshaphat cried out. And it came to pass, when the captains of the chariot perceived that it was not the king of Israel, that they turned back from pursuing him. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Wherefore he said unto the driver of his chariot, Turn thy hand and carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day, and the king was stayed up in his chariot against the Syrians, and died at even. And the blood ran out of the wound into the midst of the chariot. And there went a proclamation throughout the host about the going down of the sun, saying, Every man to his city, and every man to his own country. So the king died and was brought to Samaria, and they buried the king in Samaria. And one washed the chariot in the pool of pool of Samaria, and the dogs licked up his blood, and they washed his armor according unto the word of the Lord, which he spake. Now the rest of the acts of Ahab, and all that he did, and the every house which he made, and all the cities that he built, are they not written in the book of the of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. So Ahab slept with his fathers, and Ahaziah, Ahaziah, his son reigned in his stead. And Jehoshaphat, the son of Asa, began to reign over Judah in the fourth year of Ahab, king of Israel. Jehoshaphat was thirty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and five years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Azuba, the daughter of Shilhai. And he walked in all the ways of Asa his father, and turned not aside from it, doing that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away, for the people offered and burnt incense yet in their high places. And Jehoshaphat made peace with the king of Israel. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat and his might that he shewed and how he warred are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah. And the remnant of the Sodomites, which remained in the days of his father Asa, he took out of the land. There was then no king in Edom. A deputy was king. Jehoshaphat made ships of Tarshish to go to Ophir for gold, but they went not, for the ships were broken at Ezekiel. Ezion Geber, Ezion Geber. Then said Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, unto Jehoshaphat, Let my servants go with thy servants in the ships. But Jehoshaphat would not. And Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David his father. And Jehoram, his son, reigned in steed. Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel and Samaria, the seventeenth year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned two years over Israel. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of his father, and in the way of his mother, and in the way of Jerobeam, the son of Nebet, who made Israel to sin. For he served Baal, and worshipped him, and provoked it to anger the Lord God of Israel according to all that his father had done. I've just read 1 Kings chapter 22, 1 through 53. 1 Kings chapter 22, 1 through 53. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you to say thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord, for teaching us thy way. For teaching us what we should do, what we shouldn't do, and how we should do that which you asked us to do. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to read this word, to hear this word, to see this word. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you that you take our breath away every time we read your word. You teach us something new every day. Lord, we thank you. May you add a blessing to the reading of your word. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hello to all my entrepreneurs. My name is Sharice Johnson Moore, and welcome to Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast. Do you have products and services that you want to tell the world about? Well, I have an offer for you. Did you know that when you make a 60 minute voiceover ad and place it in podcasts, that it increases your business awareness by 50% in the marketplace? Voiceover ads aren't that expensive. They range from $15 to $25. It all depends on where you place your ad in the podcast. So come on in and place your ad on Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast and tell the world what you have to offer. You can reach me at I am Sharice at ShariceNJohnsonMoore.com or 724-570-1153 for further details. Come on, let's tell the world what you are made of. First Kings chapter twenty two, one through fifty three specifically has this topic in mind. Being hard-headed can get you in trouble. Being hard-headed can get you in trouble. When you don't listen to the advice that someone has given you, given you a warning that Micaiah has come to warn Ahab about what is going to happen to him. And Ahab, like, I ain't trying to hear that. I, you know, he don't never have nothing good to say. You know, he, you know they got they got 50 laban prophets, right? But it's this one prophet that uh, uh, Ahab just does not like, right? But Micaiah, he gives it to him. Um, he says, I'm not going to stand here and lie to you like the rest of them. You know, I'm not I'm not going to, you know, lie to you, tell you a story, tell you what you want to hear. Um, and it is good to have people like that in your life when they don't sit there and lie to your face and tell you what you want to hear. Sometimes you, you what you want to hear, you don't want to hear because it's not it's, it's not going with your plan, you know. And that's how Ahab is. And it's like, look, I, I just don't, I ain't trying to hear what he got to talk about. Because he don't never got no good words for me. Okay. And everything that Micaiah tells him comes to pass. Ahab dies during the battle. Uh, you know, and uh, and during that course of time, you see that Jehoshaphat dies as well. Everybody they are warring, they are they are tussling, they are having they are having problems, and they die. You know, the the two heads they die in this battle, and they and 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 they rest with the Lord. And one, and then you leave it to somebody else. You leave it to the next generation, and the next generation does not do what they are supposed to do. They send the children of Israel. And the, and, the, and the tribe of Judah into sin. They don't, they, somebody forgot to teach them about the Lord. Okay, At, you know, when, when you know, raise up a child in the way it should go. And when 
God is not taught in the home or not presented in the home. Yeah, you could go to church all you want, but if you don't have an understanding of the Lord, you're bound to do some stuff you know you ain't supposed to be doing because it has not been taught that it's not good to do. And, and sometimes it has a, it creates a generational curse of the things that we don't teach our children and they still, you know, they go, you know, because they're not taught, they're not sat down, they're not, they're not, um, they're not instructed. And that is the thing that God is always trying to teach us, always be, be open to instructions, to heal, to see, to think, to consult with him about the things that we should do in life. And when you don't listen, everything, it has consequences. When you don't listen, when you don't take out your time to say, you know, weigh the pros and cons about stuff instead of jumping off the cliff, you know, that's just like, you know, um, starting a company and you want this company to prosper and you want it, but you have not put a business plan together. You have not prepared. You not had done not in the process. You don't have no paperwork to get, and you want to call it, oh, I got a business. That's like jumping off the cliff with no parachute, okay? That is like jumping off a cliff with no parachute, okay? Like just, oh, my God, I can't believe, you know, uh, you know, believe the person did this. And like I said, you know, it's always good to get wisdom, to 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 have wisdom in your life or guidance or, you know, and, and when you don't feel like you, when you, when you feel like you don't have that, it's always good to consult with the Lord first before you step out into the, the step out into that uh, situation or that circumstance or, 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 you know, or, um, how could I say this? Um, before you go volunteering your time to do something, always consult with God first about before you do it, because you got to wait, you got to think about, okay, do I got time to do this? Do I got, you know, it's, it's strange, the process, it's a process to everything in life. And when this process is not done to completion, God giving you these steps to do them and you, you try to go around them and you know, you you try to go around. I, I don't want to. I don't want to file this. I don't want to get an EIN. I don't want to. I don't want to pay the government no taxes. I don't want to do. You know, majority of the people that say they claim they got businesses, they are not in legal standing. And sometimes that's how we. That's how we treat God. It's not in. It's not in His standards. It's not in His commandments. It's not in His statutes. And I'm gonna just do what I want. And when you do, when you when you live in that atmosphere, things happen that have consequences. So the consequences from, uh, you know, uh, the consequences from what just happened in this chapter is that. The next generation takes over, and they run amok. They have no guidance. They have no. no they have no ruling. They have. They just doing what they want, and they live in. They live in a sinful life. And um, this is the consequences sometimes of what you what uh, what happens when children are not when children are not. Um, when children are not guided, instructed, uh, you know, uh, you know, you pull the bow back, and the bow is, look, I'm trying to teach you something. I want to teach you. I'm gonna teach you all these things in life, and I want to teach you to the fullest. And then you let go, and they go out into the world, and that bow, that that bow goes all over the place and doesn't hit its target. Oh, sometimes bows do that, but you know you got to you got to train them. That pulling back of the bow is the training part. During from childbirth all the way up to maybe 18, 19 years old, you pull that bow back, and you pull you pull the arrow back, and and you and you doing and you trying to teach them and mold them and 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 do all these things with them to teach them character and teach them wisdom and teach them knowledge and teach them right from wrong and things of that nature. And when 
they lack that, they run amok. And sometimes, I ain't going to say, I ain't trying to be funny, but sometimes you still raise them like that, and they go off and do all this crazy stuff anyway. You know, um, <laughs> some some feel like, uh, the children feel like, I, I don't want to be like my mom, I don't want to be like my dad, I don't want to be like them. And they go off and do all kind of stuff, and, you know, all the worldly stuff, you know. When I leave home, I'm, then they, you know, they go party, 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 and, and you know what I mean, you know, the life... They do not know how to handle structure outside of their parents. You know, once they get out in the world and they see everybody else doing whatever they want to do, you know, that's that's sometimes that happens. And sometimes it doesn't. But all we can do is hope for the best. Okay. And our children are the world to us. But we also have to let them learn and explore and do and all this good stuff, you know. And that how that is how life is. But we have to have, we have, but there's nothing in life like doing something and you don't realize the consequences to your actions, you know. So um, teach your children the way. Teach them right from wrong. Love them in a kind, gentle way. And let them explore. But, you know, pull back the reins a little bit. Come on, you know, you, you're getting out of hand or whatever. But then we have to pray over our children as well. We have to pray over them as well. And guide them in the best way that we, sh- that we think they, they should go. And sometimes you have to leave your children in God's hands to get them to understand that life is not with a silver spoon in your mouth and everything is not going to be handed to you. And, you know, you got to work for what you want. You got to get this education in order to level up. And, you, you, you know, and some things that you do in life have consequences. So I pray that you enjoy your daily devotional for today. And I love you, and I thank you for listening for Daily Devotional Today. I will talk to you later. Love you. Bye-bye. Hello to all my entrepreneurs. My name is Sharice Johnson-Moore. I am the owner, CEO of LBM TV. It is a streaming channel that can be located on the C1 Media Network Smart TV app. This app can be located on Apple TV, Roku TV, Amazon Fire Stick, Android TV, and Google TV. We have advertising spots available for businesses that want to advertise their products or services on our channel. We have an audience of 4.25 million viewers daily reaching 70 plus countries. We have advertising packages to fit your company's needs. We would love for you to join the LBM family. You can reach us through our email address, lbmtvmedia at gmail.com or call us at 724-570-1153 for further details. Talk to you soon and let's advertise, advertise and tell the world what you are made of. All right, all right, all right. I know it's it was getting good, you know, it was getting good. But uh, you know, it is time for us to depart. Until next time for daily devotional. We want to thank Anchor.fm.com for being our home for this podcast and distributing it to the following channels: Apple, Google, Spotify, Breaker, Overcast, Radio Public, Pocket Cast, Verbal, Amazon Music, Audible, Reason, and Castbox. Oh, 
Did I tell you we got a new place? We got a new home. It's called iHeartRadio. Yes, you can catch uh, Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast now on iHeartRadio. So go tune in over there if you please. If you have enjoyed this, you know, enjoyed this program, this podcast episode segment of Daily Devotional, or the other segments, Morning Word and Worship, Let's Talk Sunday, Entrepreneur Corners, and Authors Excerpt Sunday, please do not hesitate to support this podcast with a monthly donation as little as $0.99, cents, $4.99, or $9.99 to bring this podcast into thriving and leveling up of your because of your love and support. Okay, you can give your donation through GPay or with any major credit card. Okay, babies, I want to say I want to thank all of you that take out your time to listen to Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast, and this segment is entitled Daily Devotional. And I love you and talk to you next time on Daily Devotional. Bye, babies.